some farmers in the three, northern, uh, three regions of the north have launched an appeal to government to try and save the situation as the Bagre Dam spillage continue to cause havoc in their farms. Many farms in northern, upper west and eastern uh, regions have been submerged with tons of produce rotten. The situation is giving rise to fears of food shortages in the country as many of the affected areas are imported, uh, important food producing areas. We'll take you there live as a team from the Peasant Farmers Association tours the affected areas. Right now, let's bring you this report fired by Upper East Regional Correspondent Albert Sori. Acres of farmlands of rice, maize, beans, potatoes, and many other crops have been lost to floods almost two weeks after authorities in Burkina Faso started spilling excess water from the Bagre Dam. The worst affected areas include Doba in the Kasna Nankana municipality, Bazwa, Kobori, and Yarigu in the Boko West district, Pualugu in the Talense district, and other areas in the Bulsa North and South districts. Some of the farmers in these areas have lost all their farms and have no way of recovering the investments they made at the beginning of the farming season. This time it went uh, shoulder high and the plants are almost withered. So some may pick up, but it will take a long time for them to pick up. And the fertilizer we have put in is all wasted. We lost our rice, granite, maize, this is our guinea corn, uh, beans, so many uh, crops that we've lost. So in fact we are really very, very sad. I'm farming about 30 acres of mango. I did about 30 acres of wandata and right now if you go there, the water has been able to travel and taking half of the farm. The government is doing its best by providing us uh, subsidized fertilizer and giving us seed to plant. Then after that, maybe when we sell the seed back to the government, then they will deduct the cost of uh, what they have given us. Officials of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in the Upper East region have been speaking to Joy News on the extent of devastation since the spilling of excess water from the Bagre Dam started. For the total region, we have rise an estimated area of 954.4 hectares have been completely destroyed by the flood. And maize is 4,598 hectares. Number of communities that have been affected by this flood in the nine districts that we are talking of are 65 communities. Even if a farmer is going to make an average of, let's say, six bags per acre, that is even the least. If they are, a farmer is going to make that, multiply that by 900 and multiply it by 2.5. You will see the deficit that we are getting. Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Sagre Babangi, has been on a tour of the affected areas in the Upper East region to assess the situation and to encourage the affected farmers. The Deputy Agric Minister also had this response to the calls on government to construct a multi-purpose dam which can always drain the floodwaters around the White Volta Basin. It was still at visibility stages stage and so the ministry is going to continue with these studies and also go for a design it is after the design that funding can then be sought for it is unclear for now if the Bagre dam is still being spilled but rainfalls have generally increased in the northern parts of Ghana in the last two weeks, further compounding the problem of floods and heightening fears that there could be food shortages in the coming year due to the destruction caused by the floods. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, reporting from Bolgatanga. And with that report, let's go live and speak to Charles Nyaba, who is leading a team from a, uh, the Peasant Farmers Association to assess the situation there. Mr. Nyaba, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. What have you found on this tour so far? 
Mr. Naba, if you can hear me, can you tell us what you've found so far on this tour? I'm having a difficulty there establishing contact with Charles Nyaba there who is leading the Peasant Farmers Association to the Upper West, uh, Upper East uh, region where farmlands have been submerged there following the spillage of the Bagre Dam. Let's try this once again and if we don't get through we can move on safely. Hopefully we'll come back to him. Mr. Bagre, Mr. Nyaba, can you hear me? Please can you speak louder? I can hear you. Very well. I wanted to find out uh, what you have found on this tour yeah, so far. Something. Is it good enough? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, it's better. So tell us. Yeah. Um, I think I just had a discussion with uh, farmers from uh, around here, pay area, and they are sharing their experience with us. Uh, there were a number of farmers who were standing by their farms. Uh, the farms were all submerged. Uh, according to them, they couldn't estimate the cost at the moment, but the, uh, the farm side was more than uh, 30 hectares and that it belongs to the uncle. And now the uncle has been in the room since the last three days. He doesn't even want to come out to see the farms. So they come out, look at the farms and then go back uh, uh, to, to give him a, a feedback. And they were uh, uh, calling on government to come and see things for uh, the government itself. And that mm -hmm. when they talk, uh, it was, it was always, it's always easy for um, government appointees to condemn that, that they are conjecturing figures to get support from government. Their concerns were not even how much they invested on their farms. According to them, that farm feeds over 20 people in the family. And now they're even thinking of how to get food to eat. And that any support in the form of either food aid or whatever to just make them survive, uh, will be very, very important. That's a very unfortunate situation there, looking at the impact it is having on these farmers themselves who, you know, plant and harvest these foods for us. But this also has serious food security implications for uh, the country. Uh, let me find out from you what it is that your association, for example, can do in the immediate term to support these farmers. Yeah, for now, we want to assess the situation first, uh, and then we will uh, think of uh, how we can also in our small way, contribute to just sustain mm. this report whilst we call on government to come up with a big investment. So um, I'm still in the northern region. Uh, from here, we proceed to Upper East. I will go to Upper West. And when we extend the station, we will also try to launch some fundraising campaign uh, to see whether other NGOs and then development partners will come to their aid. One, the one thing that, uh, before I let you go, Mr. Naba, one thing that beats people's minds is the repetitive nature of this. This is a cycle. It's like we know what's going to happen at what point in the in the year because the Bagre Dam is spilled over and over every year. We have the same impact, the same situation. Is there a sustainable solution to this from i mean your farmers have been dealing with this for a long time have you been engaging them so you can help government or whichever organization it is to find a lasting sustainable solution to the spillage of the dam and what can can be done about it really yeah actually uh, i can say formally we have launched a serious campaign uh, to address this every year you know this can happen we talk and then we go to relax but i think this is an eye-opener uh, even to the extent that the, uh, the current government campaign is to develop the country through agriculture, it's now the time for us to find a lasting solution to address the situation and also to be able to use the opportunity to develop the sector. Mm. I think we cannot continue to lament every year and then we allow this to go. So just like I said, uh, we are doing the assessment and then within ourselves, we we'll come up with a proposal that uh, would uh, lead to a lasting solution to address the situation and also um, uh, recommend to government on what to do. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. This is a disturbing situation. Mr. Nyaba, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Charles Nyaba there, he's leading the Peasant Farmers Association. He's in the northern region at the moment. He'll be moving to the Upper East where farmers are distressed over the effect of the spillage of the Bagre Dam on their produce and on their farmlands. Let's take you to Parliament where we can find out what can be done from there to us at least minimize the impact. Eric Opoku is the ranking member on the Food, Agriculture and Cuckoo Affairs Committee of Parliament. He also joins me on the line now. Mr. Opoku, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I was just asking the peasant farmers that this is 
a vicious cycle. It's like a broken record, and we keep breaking the record over and over again. Farmers are distressed. Uh, the, the dam is spilled. We talk about it. We move on. The next year, the same thing happens. What is a, a parliament, and, and as a matter of, of, of fact, your committee doing about this? Now, first and foremost, let me thank you for the opportunity to speak to this matter through your medium to the good people of our country. Actually, we have heard about the flooding in the northern part of our country, and we are aware of the devastating and debilitating effect that it will have on agriculture and uh, food security in general. So, as we are aware, Parliament is now on reset. Our leadership of the committee is in discussions with the ministry to see if we can arrange a meeting to put our heads together to see what can be done. First and foremost, we want to listen to the ministry to find out what measures we have put in place uh, to address the situation. And then also, we look at what the committee uh, can do about it. And, and, and let, me just, let me just find out. Uh, the committee, the parliamentary committee, it's supposed to be a team of people who have expertise, people who have uh, relevant expertise in the area uh, of that committee. Isn't there any engineering ideas that's coming on the floor, I mean, or coming on the table for you as a committee to discuss as to how we can even, uh, you know, harvest this water and make better use of it rather than have it destroy no, our, it, our plants? It, you see... Uh, this thing keeps on occurring. It is like an annual ritual. And what we need to do is to come up with a lasting solution. Other countries, other jurisdictions have suffered say, for a long time, but they were able to address it. So we are of the view that if we are able to touch the engineers that we have, to look at the situation, to fair solutions, and probably construct better direct the water. The water can be collected later for education purposes. But that is the, 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 the last solution that we are all uh, looking at. And you know that is also capital intensive. But we are looking at what has happened now. The people mm. are not getting food. Some of them have been displayed. Where to sleep is even a, a problem. We are told that Nambo is responding. But obviously, their response may not be adequate. And if you have listened to the Pizan family, we are even asking for people to come to the aid of this family. So let us uh, resolve the critical situation today. And then we sit down to prepare the lasting solution to the challenge that we have now. If that you report, mm. when we're uh, saluting the farmers on the farmers' day, we raise some of these issues on the floor of the house. That's the other jurisdiction. What they do is that they have insurance packages for the farmers against fire outbreaks, against drought, against flood, and other things. So if you have some of these things in place, when their farmlands are prepared, the insurance companies will go to the aid of these farmers. That but actually brings me, Mr. Poku, that actually brings me to the other side of my question where it's really about the farmers and what can be done in the immediate term to help them in this matter. That's right. That is why we in the committee, we are saying that we are arranging a meeting with the ministry. You know we are already and getting members even to meet when we are already becomes very difficult. Some have even traveled abroad and other things. But we are trying to locate our members, assemble them, and then engage the ministry to look at because they hold the resources, what is being done. And then we look at what we from parliament can also do to alleviate the plight of the farmers in that area. But if you are, talking, you are not talking about the farmers alone of the physical condition in which they find themselves, but it will have an impact on the diversity of Ghana because of the shortage of food that we are likely to experience. And that is why we are saying that we cannot resolve everything at once. We look at the farmers first because of the critical situation in which they are. And then after that, we look at how all of us as Ghanaians and come together and then resolve the matter once and for all. Hopefully, we will be able to resolve this matter once and for all because, quite frankly, it doesn't make sense at all that water that can be used to uh, 
help the farmers is rather destroying them, especially looking at government's uh, one, one, one village, one down projects. This is certainly a way uh, of going about it. But certainly you are a ranking member, so uh, I won't expect uh, to put that before you. But thank you so much, sir, for your time this afternoon here on the polls. Eric Opoku there is a ranking member on Parliament uh, Food and Agriculture uh, Committee there.